years now. Hi, Ellie. Oh, good. Well, you can be up here and help me. So anyway, when I first came here, we used to do this big thing at Christmas parties where the staff would be asked to participate in entertainment. So it wasn't like just get up and do a skit. I mean, we're talking full entertainment, like singing songs with the guitar or doing skits and with costuming the whole nine yards. And this went on for a few years, and it got to the point that the staff, she brings it up in the staff meeting and everybody is quiet. I mean, it's deadpan, no one's saying anything. So she talked talk to her after the staff meeting, she goes, that, that, no one's doing it. She goes, I'm gonna have to bribe them. So the next staff meeting, she goes, okay, I'm going to give $100 to the best entertainment at the Christmas party. <laughs> and the party was to take place over at her house on Corbata. So we go, okay, this is getting serious now, right? So everyone had entertainment, it was really fun. Once they got into it, they really enjoyed it. Well, I wanted to do some entertainment as well. And earlier, Ellie and Elle both dressed up as little sunbonnets. Well, I am not a fan of sunbonnet Sue. I think it has to do, because my name is Sue, so everyone goes, oh, little sunbonnet Sue, and I just, I'm just not a fan at all. So I thought it'd be really fun to do the demise of sunbonnet Sue. And Dylan, who's my son, He's now 27, but he was like in elementary school at the time. He helped me and we came up with all these things that could happen to Sun Bonnet Sue. So if you're a big fan, um, I apologize in advance. <laughs> it's, it's all in fun, it's just in fun, you know, take it with a grain of salt. So we're gonna go through them. So this is a story about Sun Bonnet Sue taking a road trip. And it all starts out, Sun Bonnet's about Ellie's age. She's going, you're in first grade, right? Are you in first grade? Mm hmm okay, so she's starting to walk down to the bus stop, and she goes, you know what, I do not want to go to school today. I'm not saying you should do this. You should go to school. <laughs> I do not want to go to school today. I'm going to run from the bus. So this is what she does. She runs from the bus, okay? <laughs> she's on full force run, go away from the bus. So she decides of all these places she wants to go. And it was about the time that Mount St. Helens was erupting. And you know how all those like silly fools were going up to Mount St. Helens and hiking up there to see what's going to happen, right? Well, she decides she's going to hike up there with all the crowds. And just as she gets to the very top, it erupts, okay? And so all this smoke and all this stuff comes coming out. It gets caught in the bottom of her dress. And there she goes. <laughs> She is in the air flying by, okay? So she kind of got stuck in the jet stream up there. And when she was in the jet stream, it kind of took her up to Alaska. And the salmon were all going up the rivers, right? And so, of course, the eagles were around. And the eagles loved to jump down and, and get the salmon. Well, she's like looking down there at these, at these salmon. Well, she's down the ground now. She's looking down at the salmon. It's pretty fun to watch them if you've ever seen them spawn up the river. But um, the eagle comes down, and well, she's kind of bright color. She sort of looked like a salmon. So here the eagle picked her up. <laughs> and she's like flying through the air. Well, the eagle decided that they didn't really want sunbonnet. So she finally gets dropped off over Wyoming. And here she is in Wyoming. And what they were doing, they were doing a cowboy and Indian reenactment. So they're all dressed up in their costumes. And I think Civil War reenactment, but now they're cowboys and Indians. So they drop it, and these Indians just didn't know what to think of her. So they start, started chasing Sunbonnet Sue. I, we spent a lot of time on these, Dylan and I. So anyway, so here they are. She runs and runs and runs. Well. She decided she had enough of this wild life and this outdoor life, so she's just gonna go to one of the big cities. And I'm not gonna say which big city because I don't wanna harm anybody's feelings of which big city. But all cities have either really good parts of town and they also have not so good parts of town, right? So she is going down and she's walking along, she's looking at the beautiful buildings, she's looking at all the nice shops, and then it starts to get kind of dusk. And she, before she knew it, she found herself on the wrong side of town. Sometimes we call it the wrong side of the tracks, right? So unfortunately, some bad people came and she got mugged. <laughs> but it's only a surface wound. It's only a surface wound. I told you, I didn't want you to, this is the worst one. 
<laughs> okay, so anyway, so she decides, okay, well forget this northern part of the world. I'm gonna go down to the south, because I heard the south is really friendly. They'll talk to you, they'll feed you good food, they'll just have really fun. So she goes into the restaurant and she decides she's gonna order frog legs. Because everybody knows that frog legs taste just like chicken, right? <laughs> right, that's what they always say, it's just like chicken. Just like rattlesnake tastes just like chicken, right? So. She goes into the restaurant and she orders it and the waiter brings it out and it has one of those big silver domes on it, you know, and they have those fancy meals. And they open it up and the frog takes one look at her and eats her. So here is the happy frog. <laughs> this is, don't you like the smile on his face? Yes. Yeah. I know, well, she'll come back out, but he doesn't like her very much. So. Anyway, she gets out of there and she starts walking along the south and she's going, she leaves um, New Orleans and so then she goes into Georgia. And Georgia is known for having lots of snakes. So she was going along and all of a sudden, this snake took one look at her and there she goes. <laughs> this I think is my favorite one. I've made about three or four of these. <laughs> but do you know how you ever seen a snake eat something? It really looks like that shape. Yeah. There you go. Okay. So she survives the snake. And now she goes over and she's in the Everglades. Can you tell we travel a lot? <laughs> she's in the Everglades. And while she's in the Everglades, she's went on one of those airboats. And she's going along. And all of a sudden, the crocodiles saw her. So they started, like, chasing her. So there she's running from the poor crocodile. So there she goes. Well, she goes all the way out to the Atlantic coast outside of Florida, and she decides she wanted to go fishing. She saw all these big burly men. Oh, I can't pick it up. <laughs> so all these big burly men, and she goes, oh, I'm gonna go fishing with them. So she gets on the boat, and the, the guys are all looking around. They just look at and they go, oh, must be a new kind of bait, right? So they used her as bait, and here she is. <laughs> Unfortunately, she was attracting the wrong kind of fish, right, the sharks. <laughs> Dylan designed this one. I have to give him credit for this. He's a, he loves to fish. So anyway, they didn't catch any fish. But unfortunately, my timing on this one was, remember when there was all those shark attacks in Florida? So I had to take this out of the show for a bit. But <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so now she's going up, and she's up in Tennessee by now, and she starts smelling this barbecue. Oh my gosh, does that barbecue smell good? And she's hungry, and she starts hearing the banjo music, and up in the hills, you can see where all the stills are going. There's smoke and steam from the stills, which really does happen, by the way. And um, so she walks in, and all these hillbillies just look at her and go, oh, must be something new to eat. So here she is on the, the spit. <laughs> Barbecue, it's known for its barbecue. <laughs> well, they didn't eat her, but she decided she really needed a job. She's getting quite broke by now. So she looks in the one ads and she realizes that up in Schenectady, New York, is a research and development place for General Electric. So she goes, oh great, they have openings, I can go test products. So she goes and she applies and they said, well, what do you like to do? What do you know how to do? And she says, well, I'm only six, I don't know how to do much. And they go, I bet you can make toast. So they sent her to the toaster department, and here she is testing out the toaster. <laughs> so there she is. She didn't last too long at that job, but she did have lots of toast. So she got to eat. Well, that job didn't work out. So at this point, she decides, you know what? She's going to join the armed forces because it's so important to support your family and to support your country and just, just be a good person. So here she goes in, and she joins the army. This is another one of my favorites. She joins the army, Aww. see, and she's marching. She's doing a good job. Uh -huh. Don't you, isn't it amazing what you can do just with the change of the fabric? Well, while she was in the army, she meet, meets some other people. And in their free time, they learn how to quilt. You knew it had to get back to quilting at some point, right? They learn how to quilt, and they just heard about this show in Paducah, Kentucky. So they all got their leave at the same time and off they go to Paducah, Kentucky. Well, they're enjoying, they're at the quilt museum, they're enjoying the quilts, they're having a great time, but no one told them not to touch the quilts. And this is what happened. <laughs> the quilt police got to them. 
see what a little stripe power we can do for you. So here they are. They're still marching, but not in the same location. So they served their time, learned their lesson, and at that point she decided that, well, she couldn't go back because now she got disarmed with discharge for, for doing that. So she decided she's going to go be a nun. She decided she really needed to have her faith in order before it was time to pass on and, you know, just make sure everything was good. So here she went to New Mexico, and here she is at the convent. See? She's a good little nun. She spent her final year serving, serving the Lord and serving people. And it was a good thing that she led a good life in the end because after she passed away, here she is in heaven. Oh. And that is the end of Sunbonnet Sue Divide. Oh. So we were, um, oh, I don't know how long ago. It was, we were in Berlin, Ohio. And it's a, there's a, a lot of Amish people there. And we were doing a show. And Eleanor and I um, we did several programs for them. We got to spend time seeing them, like, work at the fields and did classes for them, went to all the little stores. We just had a really good time. Her cousin Carol and her friend Lois came and visit us. Wonderful time. Well, at the final luncheon, they decided they were going to do this little presentation. They wanted to give each of us a quilt, okay? So the quilt that Eleanor got, she got the Patriotic Eagle out of the Star Spangled Favorites, which I thought was fun. But guess what they decided to give me? Because my name is Sue. <laughs> so here you go. <laughs> and I thought, I thought Eleanor was going to wet her pants. <laughs> We were laughing so hard. So anyway, um, yes, it was pieced by a miller and quilted by a yoder. So if you know a lot of, it's a very common, it's like Smith and Jones. So anyway, so this is my sunbonnet suit quilt. And I come home and I go, I tell my husband, I said, oh, Ken, I got this wonderful quilt. And he opens it and he goes, oh my gosh. <laughs> do they know what you do to her? Says, no. So you get a lot of stuff like that. So back to my beginning part of the story, entertainment at Eleanor's Christmas parties, and yes, I did win the $100. And at that point, they were just kind of tops. They weren't quilted. I didn't get them quilted until we did that program in Paducah one time. So is it what you remembered? Oh, yes, it's what I remember. That was terrific. So now... Now... For the next part... Yes, now for the next part... Um, I was, I read a lot of, my mom reads a lot of like Us magazines and People magazines and things like that. And my mom doesn't get out much. So when I get all her old magazines, so when she, so she's done reading them, I read them so I can converse with her. Okay. I mean, it is, it's like, it's, these people are our family almost. So I was reading this article about how Madonna travels. And I'm, we're in the airplane. Well, can you believe all this stuff, right? So I got, it came to me. I said, okay, I'm going to have this program where I compare traveling with Madonna and how she travels compared to what it's like to travel with Eleanor. Okay? As you know, we have to sleep together a lot. Yes, we do. We do. And a lot this year. So, well, it's a lot every year. But anyway, it's more this year. So anyway, I did this little PowerPoint program. So I'd just like to share it with you. Okay, so I think I'm going to so I think that it's going back up. Let's see. Yeah. How can we move so Ellie can see it too? You want to Sit so, I'm okay. Yeah. We're okay. Well, We're well, good. Not so fast. Oops. Okay, so we'll just put it on Eleanor Burns, the Quilting World's Madonna, as that's how I described it. Okay, and what this is, it's like a behind the scenes view of what it's like to travel with Eleanor Burns. <laughs> because I probably know that better than anybody. Okay? So it all it comes out, it's always an early, early start. We always seem to have flights that we needed to be at the airport at 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock, and then they change it. You have to be there two hours ahead of time, and we can go on the clock now. <laughs> Are they listening to me? Is it a clock up there? Yeah? yeah. Okay. So Madonna usually travels with at least 200 people in her entourage. Eleanor <laughs> only travels with one, and that's me. <laughs> You can just go screen to screen. Is there is like a whole bunch of people in a one person? No, it's like Okay. It's always an early start. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so there we are. Okay. Now this next photograph is a picture of the plane that Madonna travels in. So I'd like you to look at that. Is there like a private the jet? Plane. You can just go to the next screen. Next screen, please. 
Okay, uh, there's Madonna's. And for us, this is the plane that we use. <laughs> Next screen, please. I don't, they're not going. I wish I could do the button. Okay, Thank so you. there we go. Okay. okay? So that's how we go. In fact, we, have, we travel so much on Southwest that we acquire all these points, okay? So when I book her flight, it cost me $5, just a transaction fee, and I use up points. And then I am her companion, so it only cost me $5 to fly. This if is we good. Go and fly. Yeah. So it's, it's good for us. I want to stay home and be more with them, right? right? That would be really good. Do you want to ask me a question while Sue's running to get her book? Yes? Do you still enjoy oh, I still enjoy it, but I, I, everywhere I go, I really love my students. We have such a grand time. What I don't like is packing and getting to the airport on time. That's the hardest, and going through security lines. Yeah. <laughs> it's being yourself to the gate would be great. It's yeah. been a little tougher as years go on. Yeah, and another question? Pardon me? You know what, people always ask me that. Oh my gosh. Well, just last month, my favorite place was at Chautauqua Lake in New York. In New York, it was down near Erie. Oh my gosh. The owner of the quilt shop, Judy Fenton, uh, built a barn and put rooms in it for 18 people to sleep in. And we got to sleep in the barn. And um, hanging around the barn, our little signs that the cows wore. So there were the, like the cows' names. names all through there, and we ate our, had our breakfast, an Amish woman fixed our breakfast, and let me see if I can, um, let me think. What was that stuff with all the bananas and stuff? It has a really fancy n name. Cream brulee uh, or something. Yeah. Yeah, it was like cream brulee for breakfast. Ooh. It had bananas and chocolate and cream. Oh, it was a great breakfast. <laughs> and then after that, after we stayed at her house, we did move to a very old inn right on the lake mm -hmm. and stayed in those classic rooms. And it was fun. It was great fun. Um, I wish that we had a Chautauqua Lake right here. Yeah. And we could have a retreat in all these cool little rooms and buildings. It was, it was fun. But oh. almost everywhere I go, I have a great time. It's just the getting there. Getting there. The okay, getting I think there. we got our file back. Going home is no problem, I just sleep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you got your... Got I your think we got our program back. Okay, let's see. Okay, Madonna's oh, nourishment. This is her nourishment, okay? She gets all these selections, this private stuff. Okay, this is what we get to eat on the plane. Well, whoops. Okay, there you are. Peanuts. Okay, so when she finally gets to where she's going to be, this is how Madonna gets picked up. Please be right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and then this is what I get to go choose from. I just know what it's going to be. <laughs> I get to choose which car rentals we're going to do, right? Okay. You can have any so we get we the want. car and we're going to go to our location. And Madonna gets to check in at a really nice five star hotel, right? Yeah. So it should be a picture of hers. Check in at the five star. Right. Yeah. But this is where we usually get to stay. <laughs> And share the room. <laughs> yeah, and share the room. Okay, this is when it's time to go to dinner or to eat your lunch or whatever. This is where Madonna goes to very nice, high class, you know, really nice restaurant. And I hope Madonna doesn't watch this. <laughs> <laughs> but it's probably all true. It's all true. Okay, and this is what we get to choose from. We're really lucky if we have a little refrigerator in our room. <laughs> and we have our crackers and a microwave. And a microwave, so that's pretty good. Then there comes on those long trips to the issue of cleaning your clothes, right? You can only pack so many clothes. So of course Madonna just sends her stuff out, right? So she sends it to the dry cleaner. Okay? But no, this is where we get to go to do our laundry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was pretty fun. And then usually we have to do a makeshift because the ironing boards are typically broken in the room, so we have to just <laughs> use the chair. So there we go. Okay, Madonna has, I told you in the beginning, has like a 
crew of like 200 that help get her ready and get her where she needs to go. So this is where she gets prepped, has a nice little beauty chair, and she's getting her makeup on and all that kind of stuff. And this is how Eleanor gets ready to go. <laughs> this is actually, this was up in Minnesota, and, and there was a little shop called Gruber's, and um, Sue Poser owns it, and we, we've gone there several times, a wonderful, the whole family's very kind, and we're getting ready to go in there, and she goes, wait, wait, my lipstick, and so when she's in the mirror, I go, I gotta have a picture of this. <laughs> Okay, so, but basically what it comes down to, it's all about the fans. That's why she goes out, right? See as many people as we can, going all that. So the fans say it all, so I just picked some different pictures of fan groups. Um, I'm gonna kind of go around so I can tell you who's who. Okay, so uh -oh. the one that's on the left, I believe that's Yoder's department store. And Ship Shawana, there was that a big was long fun. line there. And then we do a lot of things with boas. And this was probably some sort of baby lock event because they provided all these purple boas and we had those for about a year everywhere we went. Purple boas, purple feathers, feathers everywhere. Purple feathers. I would find them up in my house in Montana and don't ask me how those purple <laughs> feathers got up there. Okay, so the next one. Um, this one, the one on the left was actually a teacher's training that we did in Paducah, Kentucky. And also in Paducah, this is the tent that we've set up in the past. And we had like 700 people. We do three shows a day for four days. That was a lot of people we saw. Okay, go, Oop. go back. Yeah. Go two. Go ahead, two. Yeah. Forward go two. One, and the next one. Okay. Oh. But the one common denominator <laughs> between the two is their perky points. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you think of that? Pretty good, huh? <laughs> There's actually a better picture of her, um, but I couldn't, we couldn't, didn't have time to get to it. It's in the um, <laughs> kitchen video, and she's got these two strainers that go, whoo! <laughs> you blocked it, people, already people know those. <laughs> yeah, we should. So anyway, so they're, they're perky points. Okay, but we've over like hundreds of, of rooms, those I collect room keys, that's part of my collection. Just to give you an idea of how many rooms, if it's a real key, That's I just a take visual. a picture of it, okay? Thousands of those little toiletry things. I mean, there's thousands of them. <laughs> and I collect them in, the, in boxes until I get to a point and then they go overseas. I take them to the people that send them to overseas or I send them over to the Count Pendleton. So, but that was before I did a send out. So we have lots of toiletries. Like my husband keeps going, why do you keep bringing that stuff home? <laughs> and over 770, 5,000 miles of travel. Wow. I had to update that. Oh, you did? Yes, 75,000 of those were this year. <gasps> oh. That's a lot. That's a lot, okay. And the next one, the secret to her energy, there's two things that keep her going. And anybody that's been around her probably knows these. One is Dove chocolate and the other is Starbucks coffee, <laughs> right? Which I would say approximately one half hour, she'll start saying, it's two o'clock, it's two o'clock. <laughs> it's time for coffee, Okay, time but, for I coffee. Ha but I have to tell you, this is what happens. Okay, we go to these events, we get back to our room, and I'll be talking to her and I look over and this is what I see. When she is done, she is just done. <laughs> <laughs> she is, I kind of going, where, where, where? oh, she's asleep. <laughs> See, look at, she didn't even, she still got her stuff in her hand. <laughs> Let's see if there's any more. Oh, and this is, this is a fun thing, things that kill us the most. Whenever we come back, a lot of times we get home like Sunday night, by the time we get into our homes, it's like one o'clock in the morning. Brian can attest to these late night adventures. And we come in on Monday morning and the staff will come and ask us, how was your vacation? <laughs> And you just that's go, the truth. really? <laughs> so that anyway, that's a little insight of traveling with Eleanor Burns. <laughs> Thank you. That was great. That was great. Thanks, that Ellie. That was great. That was great. So do you want to ask her some other questions? Like, she'll really tell you honestly. Maybe too honestly. <laughs> have you ever lost a baggage suit? Yeah. Oh, you have? Yes. Yeah. We've lost, uh, probably, um, the worst time that we lost, I think, was last year in Paducah. And yes. we got, we didn't get Eleanor's clothes. We right. had a bunch of suitcases. It was in Nashville. It didn't get Eleanor's clothes. And so we come back and we're calling. You know, you do a lost luggage claim. 
And usually you get them like in 24 hours. Southwest well, is good, yeah. Yeah, it didn't come, it didn't come. We lost it on a Wednesday. Friday, they delivered this luggage downstairs to the store. We were upstairs. They come up, oh, Eleanor's luggage here. And they bring it. I'm all, uh, that's not Eleanor's luggage. Oh. That's somebody else's. Yeah, that really lived in Portland, Oregon. Uh -oh. So I did call the person in Portland, Oregon and let them know that their luggage was in Paducah. And they're all, where is Paducah? <laughs> So anyway, she didn't get her luggage till that next Monday. So it was she just had to wear the same thing all the right. time and Orion kept sharing his underwear with he her, which was amusing. <laughs> I wore the same pair of black pants the whole time. Uh -huh. People took pity on me and they kept on gave, giving me yeah. their shirts. You like know, I had a different kind of t-shirt. But yeah. Orion would open my bedroom door and throw in a clean pair of underwear every morning. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty funny. It was pretty funny. But for considering all the luggage that we have, I mean, sometimes right. we check 13 bags of luggage. So. I mean, it's very small percentage that Southwest loses. So that's a plug for Southwest. So. I think our funniest story with the luggage was whenever we finished, this was this year, we finished our show at Paducah, Kentucky, and we had to get to Nancy Zeman's sewing weekend in Beaver Dam, Wisconsin, just a couple of days later. And we had how many suitcases? Well, we had. That we did have 13 then, that plus carry-on, plus our backpacks. Plus and carry-on, 13. So we say to Orion, okay, Orion, did you get us a, a, a car rented? He goes, oh my God. So the next thing we know, he comes and he goes, Sue, 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 come here. And he takes her to this van and says, sit in a seat, can you touch the foot pedals? <laughs> he bought us a van. To drive oh. up. To drive those 13 suitcases down to Nancy Zeman's, or up to Nancy Zeman's. Isn't that funny? It, it was just like so funny, you know, two girls from California sitting in this van, woo, 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 we had all the suitcases in the back. And know? all this cost me, like out the window, we had a mascot eagle hat, like looking out the window, you don't. <laughs> We just had all this stuff. <laughs> but we did it. We got there. We had a good time. <laughs> and I think each one of us has done this. We've got, we picked up a bag from and gotten home. And you go to unload the bag and it's not your stuff. Yes, I did it. Yeah, she did it and I did it too. One time Dylan came down to pick me up and I got home and I went, oh no. And I'm calling the airlines. I go, are you Susan Bouchard? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway. And she had something that went on I, a cruise. I had a, I had a red suitcase sitting on my kitchen floor. I was too busy. I know I didn't need it for days. And when I opened it and saw <laughs> it wasn't mine, I wanted to die. Yeah. <laughs> so I got that back down to San Diego. Yeah. It was funny. So what's the longest trip you've ever done, hour-wise, from here uh, to Europe? Oh, we've done Ireland, we've done France, mm -hmm. Germany. Those are the, I think those are the three overseas. Those are the three long ones. Yes, they were all really fun. So you need to go to New Zealand and uh, Australia. I think she's going. I'm, I, going. I'm not going to do that. No. I'm going at the end of next month. Oh. Yeah. You need a helper? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me to carry your bags. Yeah. Do that you was take fun. Sample quilts with you when you go. Do we take sample quilts? That's what's been in all us. those bags. That's. I usually put my clothes in my carry-on, uh, yeah. and yeah. then the rest is quilts. Oh, so what if you have lost those? My God. Yeah. I know, but don't think about that, Brenda. Please. <laughs> yeah. Not gonna wood. Yeah. When we see the bags come out, you know when it down at the baggage claim area, we just look and see, as long as we see those quilt bags, you can always go buy clothes at Walmart or something, yeah, but you cannot right. make those quilts that night, so. Right, yeah. right. And when I lost my bags from Southwest, I knew any man would have gone gotten a new suit, new shoes, the whole thing, but no, I went to Walmart and bought a nightgown. <laughs> and a toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun. Yes. Oh, we both have good I'm doing jobs. good. I'm doing good. I can do that. I can do that. When I was at Nancy Zeman's, I did fall on the stage. Not off the stage like the internet says I fell on the stage. We were doing dancing. We were having a good time. She was doing we were, the scoot thing. We were, sh we were like this, and my, and my foot didn't scoot. <laughs> but I've had my better. surgery, so. We're doing better. Yeah.
<laughs> we're getting. <laughs> <laughs> get for a while we have like matching things on <laughs> yeah but it's fun yes oh my gosh I'm trying to think of all these things but nothing ever nothing's working out exactly right but this is what I really want to do first one thing I want to do is I want to have an AccuQuilt club where we cut all of our pieces on the AccuQuilt cutter and sew them up Oh, Ryan's trying to get me to do that on a Saturday. And I'm not ready to give my Saturday up if I'm not traveling. That's the one thing I want to do, an <laughs> AccuQuilt Club. The next um, series that I want to do is um, I want to take antique pieces of blocks that have been started and people passed on and just left them unfinished and show you how to finish those pieces and then show them like basically the old way and the new way. That's another series I want to do. Okay, for years Orion has wanted me to do a baby book. And the years are going on and on. He goes, Mom, your babies are babies anymore. Look, and Becca and Zoe. So we're still, we changed it to growing up with quilt in a day. Is that good, growing up with quilt in a day? And what we want to do is go into each one of the children's bedrooms and create quilts for their age group and their sex so they can see that. Um, and so far, this is not working into anything I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> but now, once a month, I still do a block party or a webinar. I'm thinking of a theme, and I'm still thinking of a theme, and it's not coming to me. I told you three things I want to do, but I really need to do the fourth one. If you think of something like Elle's Kitchen, Victory Quilts, Egg Money, Underground Railroad, let me a know. <laughs> Write me an email. I need Soon. a theme of at least 12 blocks that I can put together into a quilt. Mm -hmm. I like mostly, I really like historical, but patterns that go together, mm -hmm. uh, traditional patterns. When it'll hit, when it hit me, I'll know. Right. I always get it in the shower. <laughs> I say, oh yeah, that's what I should do. We did we good today? Yeah. Did we have enough fun? Thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. You're all a part of it. If it wouldn't be for you, it wouldn't be 35 years for me. So thank you very much. It's been very enjoyable.